I was considering how to manage myself in relation to COVID-19 at home and with my partner, as well as clients. It helped to acknowledge my levels of anxiety. I decided to lengthen my mindfulness Reiki and Qigong practices in the morning, to run when I could, or exercise most days. There were also jobs in the garden that needed attention, so I decided that I would focus on those. I would continue to read, to write, and reach out to connect with others, friends, family and colleagues, as I felt that the isolation and working from home would begin to have its toll. I reached out to colleagues in order to create some support groups that I hoped would help us all process our experiences of COVID-19. It also seemed that continually watching the incessant stream of news added to my stress, anxiety and fear in the way that trauma sufferers are when drawn to watch items on trauma. So once a day, I checked in with the New York Times and the Irish journal IE Online and they gave a faraway perspective that I felt was helpful. What I did notice was a growing compassion for those in the front line and I set about finding ways of trying to offer my services pro bono to frontline health professionals, which was providing, proving difficult for me. So I was pleased to sign up with a, an Irish Association for Humanistic and Integrative Psychotherapy Register of Volunteers offering services to frontline staff in Ireland. A few of us also began to develop ways of providing pro bono individual and group work when the lockdown has lifted and people are beginning to, well, I don't think any of us are sure what that's going to look like when the lockdown has lifted. We reckon that post-COVID-19 is a time when people will need something for their adjustment to what the world would look like then. But it also felt important that at home, my partner and I keep communication open, acknowledging our own and each other's worries, hopes, expectations, fears, joys, and to offer and ask support when needed. I think without that, um, life would have become much more difficult. I felt the need to identify trigger points of my own, be aware of the process and impact of this difficult transition. So at the end of my first week, I contacted the two people in my peer supervision group to find out how they were and to ask if we could meet more frequently. We had been meeting monthly for the past 10 years as a three, sadly having to place one of our members in late 2016. Our process is difficult to explain. We tend to call it reflexive, and that's partly being open, honest, safe, gentle, nurturing, caring, exciting and emergent in relationship with each other where we bring our vulnerabilities and experience intimacy in a program, a process we loosely call reflexive. And it's an indication of how we respond to each other. You know, the idea of, of reflexive is, you know, if the doctor taps your your knee, your, your, your leg kind of moves reflexively. And so we just notice what our responses are, what the triggers are in us when the other person is talking about a client or bringing an experience. And we're open in our mind, body, heart, spirit, in every way possible. We notice in ourselves what emerges whilst listening. And we share those experiences um, without without really um, um, sieving them or screening them. We then move into a more reflective space in order to gather the meaning together, to consider what shift has taken place in relation to clients. When we reach that conclusion, we know because we all sit back and breathe. I call it the breath of congruence, when we are aligned in ourselves and together. For me, it's a rarity to find others who can sit in that space of unknowing exploration, knowing that something will emerge. It's a privilege. I know that in the coming weeks, I will need that connection more and more. 
It's also interesting given this time of unknown and the unknown and what's coming. That somehow we find a way of sitting with the unknown. And that's incredibly difficult for humans. I also hope that this is something I offer my clients, a space to come to be, to begin to be themselves in the room with me, on the video with me. And as frequently we find to not have their experiences explained away by someone else offering their meaning. It reminds me in a way of the Japanese beliefs held within Katakamuna that used a sp spiral script to explain the relationship between the known material concrete world and the whole of the unknown, unseen world they would describe as essence. Those ancient people would believe that only by focusing on the material world it would eventually lead to the destruction of life on earth. Their aim was to bring the two worlds together, to stand in the material world and allow the world of essence to come through you into the material world in the form of creative expression, whether by art, writing, music, dance and so on, thus creating balance. There is a resonance in this practice with our peer supervision practice and my therapy practice, where to allow the other to emerge requires us to suspend what we know and let the essence or the other person enter. In the world as it is today with the invisible threat, it's natural to try and separate the physical world from the world we cannot see, to find the concrete and the material.